Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with uh, another video on the bench this time. So, yeah, I've got a new uh, ESD mat here and a new bench and a whole new work area. So, yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of this, uh, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do in this video is this is my test A500 keyboard. It's not too bad in terms of yellowing and stuff, this. Um, Long story short, the next video will be an A500 repair, and uh, it's a complete system, and I need a new membrane. Now, that system is not going to sell for very much, as you'll see in that video, the general condition of it. Uh, maybe it will go for more than I think, but anyway, what I decided to do is take the membrane out of this, because we need that for the next video, and then fit this new flexible. It's a really thin PCB. Uh, I flip it over, you can see we've got some joins and things there on the other side. So, I mean, these worry me. These are a point of uh, possible failure, a bit like an original membrane. That you can get a sort of slightly um, more resilient ones that don't have those joins on the other side that way, I think. But anyway, I figure let's stick this in here and take the membrane out of this. It'll be a short video, but it's uh, you know quick and easy to upload and stuff, and uh, I need to get this out of the way. So, we'll start by just flipping this over and uh, get in each of the screws out. Now there are many uh, screws on these. Now one risk with this, one potential thing, I might end up having to order another one of those those new uh, membranes yet, is when you detach the when you detach the uh, membrane from the other side here where it plugs in, sometimes uh, that can cause the uh, thing to get damaged. It depends what type of connector is on the PCB. Certainly the Samsung ones they fail for fun the minute you detach them and you'll, uh, that's it, you need a new membrane. You can't get replacement membranes for the Samsung. This is the Mitsumi one and uh, I'll show you in a minute. There's just one connector at the top there. Right, about 40 or 50 screws later, we just need to just carefully flip this over. Before we uh, disassemble this, we need to just work out what's going on with this here. Now, I think this is one of the ones where you pull the uh, plastic down. So this plastic here comes that way, can you see that? and that way. So yeah, this is going to be hopefully one of the ones where we can detach it without damaging it. The Samsung ones, it's just a solid piece of plastic there and it's a push fit. Yeah, And just by virtue of pushing it back in, the conductive surface on the ribbon often just comes to pieces Yeah, of the Samsung ones. So in theory, this, this board, hang on, uh, help me think about this, separate the two I think. Yeah, let's just try and take the top part off. Just make sure I've got all the screws out. I'm not missing a screw here, am I? You see it's cable tied here. That is one complication here. I'm just not sure why the two aren't separating. Because I don't appear... There we go. Just a bit of stickiness to it, I think. And if you just pull it out like that, there we go. It's come straight out. So it came out without any uh, resistance there. So let's just uh, carefully move that out of the way. I'll just get the vacuum onto this. Hang on a minute. Let's just lift it from that point. So this is going to go into the other machine. It's pretty clean in there, actually. I'm surprised how clean that is. But anyway, I will just hoover that. Yeah, you can see it says Mitsumi there. It's been wiped down, this looks. Someone's wiped in the past. But we will uh, clean that, wipe that, before it goes into the other system in the other video. So just a quick gentle hoover there. Obviously, you have to be careful because you could, in theory, uh, with too much suction, suck the actual thing out. And the same with the LED over here, just be very careful, you don't suck any parts up. So I'm quite comfortable with uh, how clean that is in there. You know, we've not got any spills and things like that, and this keyboard does work perfectly. Whilst you're in here, you could just, you know, get a cotton bud with some IPA, and, you know, just go up and over each key with the wet end and then the dry end, uh, and do that. But, uh, yeah, anyway, this keyboard is alright, so I'm not going to do that at this stage, I just want to expedite this. Um, and we're just going to just clean here because there is a bit of uh, liquid or something just got on there. It's kind of brownie and uh, similarly near the edge there. I don't know you can see it, it's like a, a dirty edge. So yeah, we'll just have a wipe around any bits like that. Yeah, overall it's not too bad actually. It's going to be a really straightforward, super short video this one I think. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. So uh, at that stage we could uh, in theory just set this here. See how it fits. Hey, everything lines up perfect. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? Uh, now, before we do that, let's just have a look this back over. It came with sellotape holding various bits down here. Um, now, it also came with this, uh, an IPA wipe here. So, let's just use that. Let's just uh, tear this open. 
pull the wipe out. And I normally I'd use cotton buds, but because I've got a little wipe here, it's got IPA on it, why not use it? I've got a number of these actually, so uh, I may as well use them where I can, just wipe over each of these contacts. Now they've not got the carbon sort of conductive ink that the old Mitsumi ones have, so these are going to be a lot better. The gold plated, as you can see. So you just want to use IPA on this type of connection. Wherever you see gold contacts like that, don't get the fiberglass brush onto them, whatever you do, because you'll just wear it down. Yeah, so hopefully that is nice and clean, free from any sticky you know, residue from tape, because there were three or four pieces of sellotape holding that down. And we'll go over the connector there for good measure as well. Right, that should do. So that is pretty darn clean. Yeah, let's just flip it over, put it in position. Yeah, so I think, so this is really nice. I do think though that these potentially could be a problem in years to come. I mean, like these green blobs here, it's like a little sticky pad. What's that all about? Is that to secure the glue? So I think that these, this particular one, is, I don't know, 10 years from now, I would expect these to start to be problems actually. From usage, you know, pressure, pressure on the other side, these connections could start to weaken. So these might not be as good as you think, but I could be wrong. Someone might be able to post in the comments down below and tell me I'm completely wrong. But so then again, we haven't had 10 years pass yet, so I failed to see anybody being able to pr prove that particular issue at this point in time. So yeah, the, the, the hard part now is connecting up that. I think what we'll do here is cut that off in order that we can get the membrane, you know, this, this piece to be into place and then put a new cable tie. So let's just do that. Because I've got loads of cable ties, they're pennies each. Um, and it just means we've got an easier way to insert that. Let's just have a look at the cable ties there. Yeah, so the, the clip bit is facing upwards like that. We just carefully hang on, pull that off. I might have to cut it there. That's it. Yeah, pull the cable tie off. Just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, because, as I say, we can sort of just float it like that. So obviously the PCB comes up on the underside here like this, I think. So we need to now just carefully get that. And this is why it might not be a good idea to screw it in. Because obviously it's, it's flexible this, but not as flexible as the original one. So actually, we might be better off taking this back to pieces again. And putting that on first. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So, yeah, ignore what I'm saying. Take two. Let's remove the four screws I've just put in. And what we can do here is just lower the PCB, you can see it's coming away from the keyboard edge there. And try and, I don't know, align the two together. In fact, we can't even do that, can we? Oh, this is a pain. Let's just move the keyboard out of the way. I'm probably making this look far harder than it actually is. Uh, but what we can do is just, you know, just lift this up. Like that, and then face it down. In order to hang on, angle this. Wow, this is this is proving harder than I expected, if I'm honest. Because this goes on the underside, doesn't it? Tell you what, let's put that there. Maybe this should be screwed on, and then you could slide this up. Yeah. So let's try and line that there. Is this housing slip? Yeah, the housing slip. Look. Oh God. Get there in a minute. Just so want to go. There we go. Like that. And slide in position. So that's it. That's that. What we need to do now, I think, is hold the two together, maybe screw this board back on, but what we can do is just uh, hold, hold that like that, and push these clips back that way to support it. Now, the nice thing is the gold-plated contacts aren't with this, so that's going to make a really good, reliable connection. So I think we should be all right. You can see the PCB does move around a bit here, but obviously it's because it's not screwed in here either. So anyway, that should be alright if we just align it into roughly the right position with respect to each of these holes. Uh, get the keyboard top back on, flip it over and screw it together I think. So I think I'll start with uh, this point here. Now the screw that was in there is a wee bit corroded. So I'm just going to use the fiberglass brush on that screw. 
and you can see some of the corrosion that's come off that screw actually we'll just uh, get a tiny bit of uh, WD-40 on there and just uh, massage that screw into that a few different orientations its thread is still a bit oxidised there yeah so that screw went here and I just want to get that one in first I think just because it will secure this here the point where it joins the membrane that's it anyway I'll report back in a few minutes once I've got the uh, million screws back in and whilst I'm getting these screws back in it's obviously apparent here that we've got a couple of little spots of corrosion so I'm just using the uh, fiberglass brush there on those uh, couple of bits and there literally are just a couple here the zinc plate of these so you don't want to uh, you'll try and avoid wearing too much of the grey coating off there there's still a wee bit of corrosion just there and again just wipe that with the uh, bit of WD-40 we had I'll clean that piece of plastic there you can see that is very dirty and there's a couple of more bits here look they're just small things uh, and also whilst we're on the subject that PCB when you take that little keyboard PCB off you could replace the two or three capacitors on there if you wanted to it would probably be a good idea yeah so not perfect but that will do well I just dropped one of the screws on the floor darn if I can blooming find it I'll have another look in a minute I've got loads of lighting on here to try and find the blooming thing I felt around it it's just gone it's just disintegrated and disappeared it was easy when I was working on the carpet it really was things keep falling off this blooming table and when they do I can't find them they just seem to dematerialise anyway let's add a wipe yeah so I'll get the cable tie on at the end uh, I forget which way it went now it was this way I think yeah so the interesting thing is that screw wasn't through the plastic there but then this one was uh, that's probably because someone went in it in the past I don't know and the one screw that's got like a washer built into the head is the one that went up here and incidentally that is not through the hole is it it goes like that holds the piece of on underneath again do not over tighten you'd be amazed how many times you come across these where these screws here are really loose because they've been over tightened again the head on this screw here is a wee bit uh, dirty that goes through the plastic I'm just going to just clean the surface of that and wipe around that with some uh, IPA that'll do yeah and these screws seem a little bit longer actually I'm pretty sure the screws for this were a wee bit longer than the uh, others see that one's gone already I think the plastic on that has gone that's not even going in is it ah oh, there we go it wasn't up it was uh, too far up there that's it so we've got two screws left and three holes I think yep three holes so we have lost a screw there wasn't actually a screw in there however there was a screw there and as you can see over here we've got two holes left three holes left oh my god doesn't have lost two screws I don't know how I would have lost two screws I suspect it's one there must be one somewhere still on this table yeah there is I can see it yeah, so one there. So I need to just go find the one that did fall on the floor. I'll report back in about three hours when I found it. I spent 20 minutes looking for that screw. Now bear in mind, I've been in this workspace for a few days uh, at most. And uh, I haven't even worked or anything to have lost a screw. Yeah, it's brand new carpet. And uh, what did I find on the floor? But a tiny little black screw. It's brand new carpet. What's that come from? I think actually it came out the camcorder. Um, but anyway, so it's like I found the screw I wasn't looking for. You can see the difficulty here. It's like, it is tiles, so occasionally there's the odd gap, but it's like I've felt all around here like this. I've used magnification, used lighting. I cannot find it. I don't know where it's gone. It could have gone down a gap somewhere between some tiles. But, yeah, I don't know where it went. It's a good job I've got those spares, isn't it?
probably generating massive amount of static electricity doing this as well, that's the other thing. I better just uh, put the rust strap on. I don't know where it's gone. It's going to bug me that for ages, that is seriously going to bug me. I'm going to be spending the rest of the week trying to find that screw now. I just can't let that screw be lost, it's got to be somewhere. Anyway, we are all reassembled, there is a screw in every single hole. So let's go and test this, now uh, obviously we need to cable tie it. Yeah, I'll cable tie it back on once we've confirmed it's working, because you never know, I might need to take all the blowing screws back out again. Yeah. Got the A500 to A2000 adapter here, look. So we'll uh, test it um, with the 2000 to 4000 adapter on the 4000. So on the testing desk here, I've got stuff all over the blooming place. But nevertheless, you can see the uh, 2000 keyboard. This was uh, another video as well, adapted. Plus some LEDs and things, and we had the controller Amiga Amiga work on this one. Yeah, what we need to do here is just disconnect the adapter and plug into that adapter there. So that's straight into my 4000. And if we switch the 1084S on, so our monitor, get test kit into the floppy drive here, you can see the old membrane there, I'll clean that in a minute. Switch the 4000 on, and there we are all booted up, let's do uh, keyboard is F2. Well, it's a good sign F2 worked, didn't it, so we do escape. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. Yeah, I'm not pressing a key centrally here, I'm pressing two keys at once. But, nevertheless, yay, it's working, isn't it? It's working. That is really nice. Uh, and of course that's going to be more resilient for testing purposes. Um, and the main thing is, as I say, the, the 500 that this is uh, that the membrane is going to go into is not going to sell for very much. They don't tend to uh, get very much, uh, you know, these days. Or I might upgrade it within that video. Um, but nevertheless, there's nothing wrong with the membrane. It's good as new, and uh, that just gets uh, me up and running. But it means that the 30 quid, and this was about 30 pounds, this membrane. I'm not sort of throwing that away because I won't get that £30 back as additional profit on the uh, the five funded one that goes, it, it just doesn't work like that. Someone will pay what they feel the system is worth, even if you say it's got a you know a hard membrane, they won't be paying 30 quid more for it because of that. And that's the point. So yeah, this just seemed to make sense really. So it's just squishing the cables uh, down onto the inside of that metal, I think that's how they were, and then just pull and move that around a little bit. Yeah, that'll do, I think. And we just need to cut the end off there. That's it. That will do. The, I'm not sure if the wires were on that side or that side. In any case, the uh, cable relief is the important bit there, the cable tie. But the main thing is, anyway, it's all back together. It's fully functional. I am very pleased. So the final thing to do here is just a clean heart hole membrane here, just gently. This is the side without the conductive pad, so we can... Uh, Wipe over that without an issue with IPA. Um, the ribbon edge here, which side is the connective edge? Yeah, it's that one there. So the other side has got the conductive edges, and I'd be very careful when using IPA. Certainly on this part here, just literally just a you know, gentle wipe like that, so, and then a gentle uh, wipe around. You can see, can you see the green? You get green coming off here. Often with these, I'll just use soapy water, but just a single light pass, and someone's done that before because I can see it streak here, it could have even been me, and uh, no, that'll do, and then just dry, gently. So yeah, there are some streaks on there, um, and as I say, that's probably some of the green coating that uh, wears off, anyway, that should do the job in that other A500. I do hope you found the video interesting, thanks to Goose, actually, he was the seller of that uh, PCB there. If you did find the video interesting, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support the channel, please see the coffee, Patreon and merch links down below. I'll catch it in the next video.